Today I'm going to show you how to build a roof rack that's stronger than 99% of the roof racks on the market for the same exact price as all these companies are charging. Let's jump right in. Special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Zach. Here we talk about overlanding gear, builds, DIY, all sorts of stuff related to modifying your vehicle, getting out there and venturing in the outdoors. Now, I recently moved into this shop. It's kind of a mess, so just excuse the mess, but I wanna to talk to you about something really cool that I just kind of stumbled upon uh, while building my rooftop tent, and that's that you can actually build your own roof rack with a ton of off the shelf parts. Almost none of it really needs to be custom made. You can just order it all from a place where they'll send you everything pre-cut and all you gotta do is put it together. It's kind of like Legos. So I'm gonna talk you through how I did all that. I'm not selling you any plans or anything like that. I'm gonna show you everything I've done to build this roof rack because it's way stronger than 99% of the roof racks on the market. And honestly, the only one that I think that comes close is Sherpa and Sherpa makes an awesome roof rack product off the shelf. So if you're looking to go get a roof rack, I definitely recommend Sherpa if you want something easy. What they do is they use a stronger aluminum than almost all the other roof rack companies, and most of their materials are thicker than any other roof rack company. So when you go and you look at their rack and it's I think like 1400 bucks, that is why they're using a more expensive aluminum and they're using more aluminum because it's a thicker material. So. Uh, you're getting what you pay for on that roof rack. I know a lot of horror stories from people who have bought some of the cheaper ones out there like Prinsu. And while it may work totally fine for some people's use cases because they don't really weigh them down, if you're gonna be putting a rooftop tent or anything heavy on your roof rack, just be careful you don't overload those roof racks because they aren't necessarily designed to have tons and tons of weight. But if you want a absolute bulletproof option, I'm gonna show you how I built one myself and then if you really don't do DIY at all, I definitely recommend go checking out Sherpa. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna kind of talk you through everything of what I did. All right, so let's start with some basics about aluminum extrusions. So here I have a 50 inch aluminum extrusion. This is off of my old up top overland rack. Really love the up top overland racks. I think they're the widest on the market for forerunners and they make a really sharp looking product. I don't know if they're the most durable on the market, but they definitely are a cool product and they're high quality. It's not like it's junk. I really think they are a good rack. They're just not the strongest out there. So this is a one inch by two inch aluminum extrusion profile, okay? And then if we grab, this is just a one and a half inch by one and a half inch aluminum extrusion profile. And you can kind of see that they're roughly the same exact height. You can get that in focus. Now, obviously, if you do the math, you know, one inch and one and a half inch, you know, do the math. <laughs> the numbers, they're not the same height, they're different heights. But this one and a half inch by one and a half inch extrusion is incredibly strong. You know, this one is probably two, but this one is super strong. And if we look at some of the other extrusion profiles out there, like here is just a little one inch by one inch extrusion profile. Now, the other cool thing is, is you can buy extruded profiles that have little holes on the ends. So if you look at that, see how there's little holes here? That is basically partially hollowed out to save on weight, but they're still very strong. So if we take this, let's see here if I can just give you a better. So there you go. Look at the size of the one by two and the one and a half by one and a half. Like you almost wonder if the cross section is almost the exact same. I guess you could do the math on that too. One and a half squared or one times two. But they're both, they're both pretty equivalent in my opinion. And so then, well what happens if you take a one and a half extrusion and you double it and you get a three inch by one and a half inch extrusion. Now you're really starting to get pretty sturdy and what I'm basically doing is I'm building a roof rack where instead of, you ha instead of having some aluminum cross rails and a bunch of these, I'm buying one and a half by three inch 
crossbars. So they're incredibly big and durable. And what I'm doing is, is instead of building the roof rack with you know the rails and then probably seven or eight of these crossbars, what we're doing is we're building an outer shell of one and a half inch by one and a half inch extrusions. And then the inside we're lining with crossbars that are one and a half inch by three inch. So hopefully this thing is just absolutely rock solid and you could do just about whatever you want on it. Now, the one caveat here is, is you're probably thinking, okay, but how on earth do we mount to the stock Forerunner bolts? Like, am I gonna have to drill into my roof? Am I gonna have to do anything like that? And the answer is no. So what's really awesome is Go Fast Campers, awesome company out of Montana. Honestly, maybe they'll start making a roof rack like this in the future, but they designed this incredibly durable roof rail system designed to hold their tent. And what I did is I looked at that and I said, hmm, okay, well, I do really like Go Fast Camper tents, but that is a pretty sweet system to interface with your roof. And then if you have little adapter brackets to that, you could build whatever you want. So that's what I did. So I picked up a set of those. They are on the pricier side of like $600, but all these extrusions that I'm talking about are gonna be, I think like around 400 bucks or so. And I'll show you later in the video when we do kind of a price comparison, how this rack is really not too far off from all of the other racks on the market. As far as price, and we're building them out of all one and a half inch extrusion profiles or that one and a half inch by three inch extrusion profiles. So you're getting a much durable rack for the same exact price, or you could build it out of those smaller extrusions and probably save money. And it would still be just as strong as those racks that we'll look at. So let's jump right in. I'm gonna put this on the top down camera and I'm just gonna draw out a couple of these things just to kind of explain it a little bit more. I'll show you how my rack looks right now on my roof, and then we'll kind of talk some more of the specifics and where you can order some of this stuff and save a bunch of money. Or on the flip side, build a basically bomb-proof rack out of stuff you know in your garage and what you order online. So, okay, so like I was saying, there are a lot of benefits to building your own roof rack. We're gonna just talk through the shape of the roof rack, but then I'm also gonna just show you some things that I have laying around my shop for my upcoming DIY tent project that I think will just kind of showcase this nicely. So on the corners of the rack, I plan to use a little bracket kind of like this. So this one's designed for a one and a half inch by three inch extrusion profile. But if we just look at it compared to like this piece, all it's gonna do is it's gonna help us make that turn and the corners of the roof rack are gonna look really clean. So this is the kind of bracket we're gonna be using on the corners. Then for the interior corners, this is what we're gonna to use to actually mount our crossbars to the side rails. So we'll have one rail running like this and it will mount right up to our cross rail like that. Really, really in theory, the cross rails are gonna be this and then this is gonna be the rail for it. So that's kind of the plan. You know, these would like slide right in here with nuts and then it'll mount on there. So that's kind of the plan for the crossbars and the rail. It's just gonna be a huge aluminum extrusion grid, so to speak. Now the cool thing is, is in addition to buying all this stuff, if you ever wanna put things on in the future, you can buy these handy little spring nuts for super cheap and they're stainless steel and they just pop right in so you don't have to take apart your roof rack, anything like that. A lot of racks currently use a spring not like this, but I think they oftentimes will charge you a little upcharge for the you know part. So being able to buy it directly from a supplier, pretty handy. Next thing is, is you can always buy any new brackets you like. So if you want a little bracket like this, you want a bracket like this, you want a little teenier 90 degree bracket, or you even wanna buy something massive like these. There's tons of options, so many options. Oh, let's say you want a hinge because for some reason you want something hinging on the side of your rack. Buy a hinge. Like you can buy so many different little parts and it really is awesome to be able to mount anything you want. And you can buy all kinds of spring nuts like these so you can build your rack and then you can put these things on, take them off whenever you want. It's a DIY paradise, or if you just need a bracket kind of made up for something and no product exists for it, having a roof rack that's super universal that allows you to build whatever you want, you can do that. Oh, also another thing, this little handle here, I think it's like 10 bucks or something. I don't quite remember how much these are, 
but a lot of companies will charge you kind of a pretty penny for proprietary handles on their rack. So just another thing, if you want rack handles on all sides, you could buy 10 of these and put them on your rack. It's very customizable to whatever you want to do and it's going to be slightly unique so you can kind of design it exactly how you feel is most beneficial. All right, so let's jump right in. For the rack, what we're going to do is we're I'll use a couple different colors. So so the whole exterior is going to be this one and a half inch by one and a half inch extrusion profile. Okay, and then this side right here will be 90 inches. Then there's going to be uh, 49.75 inches. And same with on this side and this side. Now these corners are gonna have that little gusseted triangle bracket, like so. All right, and then we're gonna have five crossbars that will go across here. So let's just do this here, try and draw this the best I can. Now the nice thing about this extrusion profile is a lot of racks and rails, like half of these crossbars will be stuck in the same place. And that really stinks because really, if you want to lay this out in any sort of customizable fashion, a lot of times you're pretty limited and maybe only like this one and this one and maybe this one will move. This one is fixed, you know, so that's not an option. And this one is fixed, so that's not an option. So, you know, this allows you to really lay out your crossbars in any way that you want. And then these, let's just be consistent here. These are one and a half inch by three inch extrusions. And these are all gonna be, you know, 40, 49.75 inches as well. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a right angle bracket on the inside of each one of these. So it's kind of hard to see. Let's change that to something a little bit more visually seeable. So we're gonna have little right angles on the insides of all of these. One right there on the corners as well. All right. And then the other nice thing here is, is we can have little holes drilled into the insides of these extrusions. So you can add little tapped threads. So on the corners, these will be attached with screws that are going in just like that. For the rest of these, they'll just have little T-nuts that slide in the channels to connect these right angle brackets. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six times four, this means we're gonna need 24 of the uh, 90 degree brackets. And then we're gonna need four of the 90 degree gusset bracket. And then I will just note this cause I know it off the top of my head. They are five, if you're looking for a, a bolt and a nut combo on the one and a half inch profile, then you want a five inch deep bolt shaft. And if it's a one inch profile, then you want a one half inch deep bolt shaft. Uh, one inch or 12 millimeters because for some reason, this one, and a, one inch profile is kind of weird. You actually typically order this in an M6 by 12 millimeter bolt and nut. So this is kind of some of the, the helpful dimensions. Uh, now the next thing you, that you need is, because we're using the GFC brackets, you need to have a bracket that will convert our rack into the actual mounting point for the tent. So that's where we come to here. And what I did is I built this out of 3 16 inch steel. And then what we did is we basically designed this bracket with some gussets. So the difference here is I actually didn't use these two gussets on the end. This one I didn't use and this one I didn't use. So the brackets are five inches long and Really all you need to be able to see is this portion right here. So this is the portion that will be connecting to the actual rack because it's one and a half inches tall. 
And then we have a one inch portion, which is what you see up here, that will be connecting to the GoFast camper system. Because the GoFast camper system has like a certain width to it, this is what I've found works best based on the brackets I made. So the holes that we are going to be putting on the portion that goes on the GoFast camper side of the bracket, these holes are 3 8 inches wide by 3 8 inches deep. If you want to cut a channel out of them like that, you can. That a 1 half inch channel will probably work, but I just did a 3 8 inch hole altogether. And then again, these two gussets I didn't use. But this is roughly the spacing. So these two holes on the GoFast Camper rails are separated by 3 inches. And then what I just tried to do was put in three holes on the rack side that were fairly spaced out. So that's what I've drawn right here. Kind of this whole area is, these are the two holes for on the go fast camper rails. And then this hole, this hole, and this hole are for on the rack. These holes I drilled to be 5 16 So you can see it right here. Um, but in theory, you could do 3 8 inch holes for all of them and it wouldn't be a huge deal. So then I made four brackets like these and used them to connect to my GoFast camper rails. The bolts that you use to connect this bracket to the rails is a little bit longer. I think I used an inch and a quarter long bolts with a 5 16 18 thread pitch. I can just write that on the screen. Um, the GFC bolt I used was a 5 16 18 by 1.25 inches. And they're a little long, but they still worked great. And then I used a nylon nut and washer. And these are all made out of 3 16 inch steel with gussets. You could pick a different gauge steel if you want, just know the dimensions will change. And then you could also make them out of aluminum if you wanted. What I did is I did steel, then I cleaned them really well, had them uh, primed, and then I just painted them with spray paint. And if they ever get kind of gross, I'll take them off, powder coat them, or sandblast them and then powder coat them. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the approach for making these brackets. I realize now I may have lost some people because they're like, I can't make this bracket myself. Neither can I. All you, you have to do really is show this to some custom fabrication shop. They'll ask you a couple of clarifying questions and then you're basically good to go and they'll make the brackets for you. A lot of times they're not too expensive either because if you're not having them paint them and these brackets they often can just make out of scrap material laying around their shop it's not gonna be a huge deal for them to make these brackets. So now that we have the brackets, now that we have the rack assembled, we can basically just toss this up on the truck using the GoFast Camper Rails and their Antenna Delete Kit, which you get from GoFast for about 600 bucks. And they've got a YouTube video on how to install those. So, so now I'll just show you a few little clips of my rack on the truck. And yeah, that's really all you gotta do. It's that simple. So you may be wondering why on earth would you even build your own roof rack? Why not just buy one off the shelf even if it's a little bit extra or not as strong? What's the point? Like who cares? Saves me a bunch of time and you know thinking about it whatever. This is the first reason. Buying lots of mounting brackets and all those things that allow you to mount accessories to your roof rack get pretty costly quickly. A lot of companies make quite a bit of money off of those brackets because there's three different three different things that make them like an awesome product to sell. They're really small so you can ship them very easily 
and they're still kind of a technical product so it's a little bit harder for you to just make that in your garage you really can't so there's a bit of a barrier to building those things yourself and also people want like a nice turnkey product so a lot of times you don't want to just go build something that looks halfway junky somebody wants it to look nice too so for all those sorts of reasons those bra brackets and things can be kind of proprietary and expensive by building your own roof rack like this on maybe one of the most universal aluminum platforms out there you can buy all these different brackets and hinges and uh, you know, nuts, bolts, all kinds of stuff to interface with this for really a lot cheaper than anywhere you're gonna buy. And all that stuff is like, you just screw it all together. It's not like you're just buying raw material and then you still gotta build a bunch of stuff. You can buy all this off the shelf for a pretty cheap price and it's going to be pretty easy to put together. Reason number two, if you're gonna be putting a big rooftop tent on your truck or you wanna put a bunch of boxes to haul a bunch of gear, whatever it may be, and you're hauling 70 miles down the freeway with all that heavy weight up there, you're not gonna want some sort of flimsy rack that's bouncing every time you hit in the highway. Or even if you're off road and you're hitting a lot of big bumps, you're not gonna want a flimsy rack. So for the, those of you out there that mainly like the rack for the look and you mount a kayak to it occasionally and you maybe have some action tracks up there, then I totally get why you might not need such a super structural rack. But once you start putting a bunch of weight up there, you really want to start thinking twice about what kind of rack you use because what you're going to quickly do is it's going to be bouncing and what you're either going to do is you're going to cause those mounting points on your roof to start flexing in ways that are a little bit sketchy because your rack is not true and not strong or another thing you might do is you might start hitting your actual roof panel so some people that have really flimsy crossbars that are overweighted will start to bend too much and they'll start tapping on your roof and that can hurt your roof and start scratching your roof, maybe even start chipping away paint. And when there's chipped paint, sometimes that means rust and sometimes that means that your roof paint is gonna start rusting and bubbling because rust is starting to form under the paint. So there's a bunch of reasons like that that you, know, you just don't really wanna mess around with weak roof racks if you're gonna be really loading them up. Third reason is I think DIY projects are always a really good exercise, especially if you're gonna be taking your rig out and to areas where there's not gonna be a lot of service or you don't have a shop that can easily service your rig if something goes wrong. Doing the more DIY projects that you can and getting more comfortable with your aftermarket accessories and even your drive line, everything about your rig, is just gonna make you that much more prepared and that much more capable when you're in the backwoods and something goes wrong and you're like, oh, I can quickly fix that. I built this whole thing myself, I know what to do. So I think, you know, having some of that familiarity is also really important. It'll just make you more prepared and less stressed if anything goes wrong out in the woods where there is not a lot of parts or people to help you fix your rig. So those are some reasons why I think building your own roof rack really might be a super beneficial project. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about roof racks. So the classic one that everyone likes to talk about is Prinsu and Prinsu is made by CBI. And it's a decent product depending upon what your use case is. This is kind of the typical entry level aluminum extrusion roof rack. You can see the crossbars here. They're a two inch by one inch and they have a 47 inch width and starts at $980. So that's kind of your standard. Jump over here. Here's the Bravo roof rack from up top. This is the one that I used to have. I still like it. I just kind of decided to switch something a little bit better for uh, my use case. This one is 50 inches wide. It's also a one inch by two inch aluminum extrusion. So similar size to the Prinsu roof rack. Both of those extrusions, I believe are straight up off the shelf. You could buy one inch by two inch extrusion T-nuts and stuff like that from T-nuts or also 80-20 and use them on these racks. Then we've got these front runner roof racks. They're even more expensive. And I think these are pretty hard to install as well. I think they require drilling. Don't quite remember, but these are you know pretty expensive, 1500. I know some people like front runner roof racks, but um, you know this is going to be way more expensive than what I've been showing you. Then we get to the Crestone rack. This is the one that I recommended if you are really trying to actually have a decent amount of weight and you just want something to buy off the shelf. Sherpa makes just fantastic products, and these are. 1400 for a specific reason. They use, I think, 6061 aluminum extrusions, which are a little more expensive, thicker, and nicer aluminum. Like, um, I think it's denser aluminum, and so therefore it's stronger. 
don't quite remember. I don't know a lot about you know the different types of aluminum, uh, if it's like a different alloy or something, but these are thicker and stronger. I think they still have the same two in inch. Eh, it's like a one inch by two inch by 47 inch extrusion profile, if I remember correctly. Um, but they use quarter inch thick aluminum uh, rails, which I think most others in the like uh, overland market use, I think it's either eighth inch rails or uh, 3 16 So still thinner than um, the Sherpa rack. So, and then, you know, once you buy this rack though, you'll still need to buy some brackets, things like that, that will work with their extrusions. Um, then if we jump over here, Westcott Designs, this is the one I actually saw, I think was the cheapest. Um, and I think this again, uses the same side of uh, roof rack extrusion profile. Um, but again, I think that their rails are really thin. Not quite sure if we just look down here, no one really ever tells you exactly what the dimensions are for a lot of stuff because <laughs> They don't want you to know that a lot of it's off the shelf. And yeah, even for these types of roof racks, you can buy a lot of nice things from different websites. So one of the stores that I really like to use is called T-Nuts. These I think come from overseas. So for some of you out there, may be a deal breaker. I think they make great products regardless. You can buy a bunch of different 10 series, which is just one inch or 15 series, which is 1.5 inch. They sell all kinds of hardware, they sell corner brackets, they sell extrusions, they sell it all. If we scroll down here, if you had one of those roof racks I just mentioned, you could go to this 10 series T-Nuts and just scroll down to the hardware and then they're gonna have a bunch of different stuff you could use. Uh, let's see here. Like, here's a spring nut right here, drop in T-Nut with spring ball, you could just buy these. Here's the stainless one, which is what I would recommend so it won't rust. And this, you know, you can get a bunch of them for only a dollar fifty, whereas most other companies I think will charge more than that. And then you just have to buy the you know correct sizing as well. So if you do M6 by one, you would come over here to screws, buy a metric screw with this stainless says M6 by 12 millimeters. So that's how you can kind of navigate around these stores. This cart I have mocked up here, three hundred and seventeen dollars sixty two cents. This is if you wanted to order all of the parts I mentioned. You're gonna have to tweak the bracket a little bit, but instead of being one and a half inches tall, it would just be one inches tall. But this is how you could build that whole entire thing that I drew with uh, one inch by two inch extrusions and one inch by one inch outer extrusions. So this would be like the more lighter weight version. And so, you know, 317.62 plus shipping plus the $600 rails from Go Fast Campers, you're probably gonna be you know, in that 900-ish range, which is definitely equivalent to a lot of those racks we just recently saw. And some of those are even gonna include shipping and stuff on top of them. So this is kind of an equivalent as well. And then if we jump over to 8020, you can kind of buy all these same things that are American made or machined in America. You know, if you go to external fasteners, this is where you can see like all their different brackets and 8020 sells a lot more accessories for extrusions than T-Nuts does. So if you wanna build some cool bracket in the future after you build this rack, you might have to buy your stuff from 8020, but they've got literally everything, it's so awesome. And if you come here, you know, you can go to T-Slot Profiles. This is where you can pick a bunch of different sizes. So there's so many to pick from. And then lastly, if we just look at my carts that I have side by side here, what I added in this cart is uh, the one and a half inch by one and a half inch. And this is uh, 49 and three quarters at the top here by 90 inches uh, on the sides. So those are the first two. They're a little more expensive and I chose the light smooth T-slots for everything to try and save as much weight as possible. And then down here is the crossbars. I chose five. You could definitely lower this number if you wanted to save money. Another thing is, is these 90 degree brackets, they cost quite a bit of money. So it's not so much about buying the bars that cost a lot, but also the hardware. Then on top of that here, I have like 20. This, these are non-stainless. So if they were stainless, I think it's a double. 
uh, but you know you've got here some extra hardware here that I would just buy so that you can connect your brackets and any sort of accessories on the roof rack easily it's nice to just have some extra hardware these are the corner brackets and then like I said these are the 90 degree interior brackets for the crossbars and then the front and back bars so that would come out to 475 so you're looking at you know about 1100 bucks for this absolutely bulletproof rack I don't know if any of those other racks really come close to the structural like robustness of this rack uh, but obviously I haven't done like any sort of scientific comparisons of weight or force or strain or anything like that now you may be thinking okay Zach well if you're building this roof rack and you just showed those clips why does your roof rack look really like different dimensions than what you just drew up and the reason for that is is I'm actually not keeping this roof rack long term this is sort of a temporary setup because I want to be able to haul some stuff and camp and have a good time this fall because my rooftop tent project is continually being pushed back a little bit and a little bit here and there and I'm just really slow at doing the fabric it takes a fair amount of time so right now my rooftop tent looks just like this <laughs> so it's in shambles and I want to be able to enjoy fall. Fall is the best time of year here in Minnesota. And so this is what I'm doing for the interim. But I was like, wow, this would be a pretty sweet project. And, you know, someone could really have a lot of fun doing this sort of project. So I want to show you what I did to just kind of create a solution in the meantime for being able to use everything I have on my truck and kind of get out there and adventure this fall. So that's kind of why I decided to do this quick rack. Mine won't look exactly how I drew up, and that's because I'm using parts off of my tent to build this rack for the temporary time. Because that's another thing that's great about aluminum extrusions. You can just take it apart and reassemble it whenever you want, and you're not gonna really damage anything. And if you ever want to change your design or change your dimensions, just throw an aluminum blade on a miter saw and you can cut stuff up. Just remember that it will change if you get stuff tapped on the ends of those. You know, you might cut off where it's been tapped, but other than that, they're super customizable, which is really fun and allows you to change your design whenever you feel like. So I hope you thought this project was cool. I actually am not gonna be keeping this rack for the long term, but all of a sudden I was like, wait a second, most people probably aren't gonna build their entire own rooftop tent themselves. Like that's a little bit, you know, in left field. That's really a bigger project. But building a roof rack like this is really not quite as challenging as a rooftop tent. And once I started doing some price breakdowns and all the benefits from building it yourself, I was like, oh my goodness, this would be an absolutely awesome project for people that's not too hard to tackle with just like a set of Allen wrenches. And man, you would really benefit a lot from this project. So I figured I'd make a video about it and uh, feel free to leave any comments down below on what you think on this project. If you've got any feedback for me, maybe I missed something, I'm not perfect. I just try my best to design cool stuff for overlanding, off-roading getting out there with your vehicle. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support from you all. And if you like what I'm doing with the channel, consider liking the video and subscribing. Helps me out, helps me be able to grow the channel more and continue to make more cool projects like these. So thank you so much for your support. I'll catch you all in the next video.